Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. In Season 4, we learned a few basic definitions for some real virtues, and this season we'll be trying to pin down the real meanings of some things that people treat like virtues, which aren't always virtuous. In other words, fake virtues. Today's fake virtue is... Pluralism. Now again, as with most of these fake virtues, there are good kinds of pluralism and bad kinds of pluralism. First, though, what do we mean by pluralism in general? These days, pluralism can be used to mean any kind of situation where many types or groups of people retain their distinctiveness or their differences from one another while still being part of the same society. And this can definitely have its uses. It's impossible, for example, for people of different races, genders, or age groups to coexist without at least some element of pluralism. We also need pluralism for many other things as well. Appearance, hairstyle, styles of dress within reason, and so forth. There are elements of tolerance and equality feeding into this. Of course, acceptable hobbies, jobs, sports, arts, sciences, and other areas of interest also fall into this category of differences which should be accommodated. To sum it up, issues of appearance, personal taste, and position or class within society. All of these things are acceptable differences between people and, in fact, can add to the very richness and variety of the world. There's also a kind of pluralism that says that many different cultural influences can coexist. That's true and it's beneficial as well. For example, you can go into the city and get authentic Chinese cuisine, look at some art from old European culture, and then go home and watch an anime. These are the kinds of benefits that come to our society by accommodating many different national cultures. However, as great as all these benefits are, there is one kind of pluralism that needs to be avoided because it's a lie. That's the view that society can afford to be pluralistic with respect to morality, religion, and its understanding of truth claims. Let me go over all three of those because it's important to understand each. First, truth claims. When I say, for example, that the sun is a continuous nuclear explosion burning constantly in the center of our solar system, I'm making a claim about the sun, and you should believe that claim because it's true. There is an unfortunate trend in many societies to believe that we don't need to be concerned with the truth, or even that there really isn't any truth. We just proved that way back in episode one. However, it's simply not possible for people to coexist like that. If I tell you the bottle you're holding is rat poison, and you tell me it's headache medicine, well, which is it? You better be sure you know the truth about that, and that means there's got to be some standard for truth claims outside both of us. Who really decides what's right? If people can't agree on this, they can't work together. And if they can't work together, there is no society, just a bunch of isolated persons all muttering to themselves. The same is true in moral matters. Unless people can agree on what the right thing to do is and act on those moral judgments against those who refuse to cooperate, the society will cease to exist, because every time a criminal robs a bank, he'll just tell the judge that robbing banks is right for him, and the judge can't argue with that. There's no society in that kind of situation, just random chaos, where whoever applies the most force wins. Finally, following from those two, no stable society can embrace all different religions as though they're all equally true. Why is this? Well, putting it simply, it's because religions are all about truth claims and moral judgments. Furthermore, when you choose to belong to a religion, it provides you with a standard to follow, and every action you take for the rest of your life needs to be gauged by that standard. In other words, each religion is a claim which is either true or false. Each religion involves a moral standard which is either right or wrong. Finally, each religion simply is the foundation for how its adherents live. You cannot have a society acknowledge all religions on the same footing for these three reasons. Let me give you an example of why. Let's say a man is brought into court and accused of killing a young girl. Well, in a court founded on a Christian belief system, we would say that he should go to jail. After all, his victim is a human being made in the image and likeness of God, and killing her is a violation of that dignity. However, suppose the man appeals to Sharia law, the legal system of Islam, and suppose that the young girl he killed recently converted to Christianity. Well, in Sharia law, that wouldn't be considered murder, so he'd be off the hook. Now, the question is this. Has justice been done merely because some form of cultural law has been appealed to and implemented? Clearly, the answer is no. Pluralism is fine if you're talking about cooking, different kinds of modest clothing, personal taste, or artwork, but there's simply no room for it when it comes to those three things, truth claims, ethics, and religion. When it comes to values, each society needs to find the correct ones and then stick to them. 
Of course, people of many different religions can indeed coexist, so long as they're all living under a worldview, like Christianity, that allows for that. If they don't, then there's no possibility of coexistence. You're just waiting for one group of people to realize that there aren't any rules and go on the offensive. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.